Hi everyone, your chess puzzler here, and welcome to the channel. This is the final final in Moscow, unless we have another draw, which means we'll not see a winner until tomorrow. If a winner emerges from today's game, then the 2019 Moscow Grand Prix will come to an end. Given both have reached the final, anyone can win it. If I had my crystal ball, I would also have the winner. I will cover this game as it unfolds. But by the time I finalize everything, the winner will long be known. But for those who don't like spoilers, I would try and keep everything hidden until we get there. Okay, Neville starts with the white pieces in a short while. The last time Nepal played Grichuk with the white pieces, he went for an E4 opening. The time before last, he went for another E4 opening. And the time before that, it was an E4 opening. And the time before that, yep, another E4 opening. So with this clear pattern, I don't even need a crystal ball to tell you what Nepal is going to play. Maybe Grichuk is the one to look out for. He's crazy enough to open with a Sicilian. That's his normal way of opening, of course. The Caro, or anything else. Okay, here we go. Nepo kicks this one off with this move. And we have no surprises here. Grichuk's answer, an E5 reply. Knight f3, knight c6, and Nepo ops for the Spanish. And with knight of six, it is castles. And there are some differences if you accept the real gambit. Grichuk accepted. And now with a straight attack on the knight. And we have gone through the options of the gambit before. What you can do and what you can't. Knight back and knight takes. And if you don't know this opening... <laughs> You can get very easily trapped. If you, for example, go on to grab this bishop, how fast do you think white loses if the knight removes the knight? And look at this horrendous discovery. And by the way, don't forget to kiss that queen good boy. But any play at this level will be committing a sin to fall for such a trap. When the pawn was removed on e5, that discovery is always on unless you want to remove the knight. And when the rook takes with a check, this variation is quite playable in fact. But other lines also exist. Grichuk got the bishop out to block any discovery. And now that the bishop on b5 can in fact be removed, Nepo got him all the way to the first rank. Knight takes, rook takes, and castles led to the very normal and expected responses. d4, the rook was attacked and rook back to base. But in this specific game, Nepal stops the rook here. Let's try and figure out why. Grishman, in fact, may have been surprised by this rook move and used the shield the rook provides to advance his knight here. It's a very risk way to play this one out. And... With the knight being so close in the white camp, even though he poses no real danger, Nepo attacked him, knight back to safety, and Nepo being Nepo, charges after the knight. If only it could be Chuck Norris to jump this pawn three squares in one go. a5, knight c3, and d6. Got the bishop to come under fire. Bishop back, and look at how Nepo tries it. He lined up the queen behind the rook and hopes to get his knight out of the way to create a discovery. Grichuk's answer, this is what he did. Not only double protecting the bishop, but in fact provoking white to go after him. If you do, there is knight b4. If you go for this, which looks quite promising, this is the way of doing things. F3, bishop back. And if you take, take, 
and take, guess what happens if you go for this? You are dead meat. Knight c5 and a simple b6. And if you try this, once the queens come off, once the knight also comes off, this will be the end of this game. Coming back, Nepal used an entirely different variation, or line if you like. He went for the knight in this way. You don't want to guess how Nepal played it when the knight was removed. He took the bishop, and now this knight has to come back to challenge the rook. I am amazed actually by Nepal to see him blitz out nearly all his moves. He has one hour, nine minutes, V47 of Grichuk's. But this simple knight retreat looks so natural, and yet he's probably looking at some other variation. Nepal is probably getting bored. He has walked off again, and Grichuk is really eating up his time for basically nothing. He finally retreated the knight. And this goes to tell you how careful Grichuk is. Not a single rushed move. Nepo is looking at two possible rook responses. E4 and E2. E4 will have the bishop to get on his case. So I guess this rook is more safe on E2. Okay, this is now confirmed. Rook E2, it is. Bishop g4 led to this, and just a word on the Rio, and how it differs from the Berlin. Well, I'm not going to tell you the difference, if any. And this will be something for you to research. Gretschuk going for this type of opening is looking for a draw, so that he can have a fresh start with the white pieces. F3 was the obvious response, and Nepal did just this. The bishop was kicked to this spot, and now for this queen response, the rook was challenged. And this is how the game moved on. With just about 20 moves having been played, Nepal has one hour, and Grichuk is the one who might be in time trouble. He's on his last 30 minutes and needs another 20 entire moves to make time control. So Mr. Grishuk loves to live dangerously. Rook takes, and queen takes. And queen rides into e8, and Grishuk will probably get that draw he's looking for. After rook e1, guess what? The game finished in a dead draw, and any differences these two have will have to wait until tomorrow and even after tomorrow we will not see the winner a boring game maybe but you can't be too careful it will have to come to an end sooner than later but it's not today another game set for tomorrow so i should be around to cover it until next time guys this was your chess puzzler <laughs>